昨日ね、バックトゥザフューチャー見た。知ってる？バックトゥザフューチャー。バックトゥザフューチャー。見た時ある？お、oh, え、yeah. 最高でしょ。うん。タイムトラベルってすげえしてみたくない？うん。うん。できたらどうするの？俺はね、ロックノール作った人に会いたい。<笑>チャックベイじゃなくて。ナツキベリー。ナツキベリー。いや。でれれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでれでもう一つの質問。Luke, Jennifer, I want you to look around the house for possessions in your life that don't spark joy, and then I want you to burn them. Burn them all. Marie Kondo would have loved it, and yet none of these things happened. Instead, I spent six months this year hunched over a laptop editing 27 videos about a bicycle. For those of you who are new to this channel and don't know what Journey Across Japan is, basically 18 months ago, I decided I wanted to get fit by cycling 2,000 km across Japan, and along the way, I'd vlog every single day of the journey. The end result was a 27 part travel series, and to call it an adventure would be an understatement, you know, against the backdrop of jaw dropping landscapes, mouth watering dishes, and eccentric characters and guests. It was epic in scale, it really was. And above all, along the way, I also got some free biscuits. However, off camera, the entire project almost completely broke me.、Uh, and from start to finish, you can quite literally watch my face crumble in real time, evolving like a broken Pokemon. So today, I'm here to offer you four life lessons I learned on Journey Across Japan, whether you watched it or not. And to give you the inside scoop on what went on behind the scenes, why I cut out one of my guests. Entirely, why it took six months to produce, and of course, how much weight I lost along the way. And somewhere near the end, we'll try and work out if it was all worth it or not, and if I would actually go back in time and punch myself in the face last year, instead of doing the obvious thing, which is, of course, to travel back 2,000 years and get a selfie with Jesus. He'd love it. Look at his face. How come the upload schedule seems to be so irregular? Maybe I'm imagining, but I swear you said weekly videos or something like that. <laughs> I never said weekly videos. Every single day of that trip, every single day of that month long journey across Japan, I'm going to be making a video and putting it up on the channel. Oh, fuck, I said daily. It's true, for some reason, when I came up with Journey Across Japan, I thought I could cycle 50 kilometers a day, film the whole thing, Upload it and somehow have daily videos. I don't really know what I was thinking in retrospect. Maybe I drunk a little bit too much Picari sweat. And whilst I did have a small team with me to help film it all,、uh, ultimately I decided I wanted to edit them myself because I'm an absolute control freak. And surprisingly, during the first week of the journey, somehow we actually succeeded. I'd get up at eight o'clock, cycle 50 kilometers in the rain, film two hours of footage. Finish the day of cycling, check into a hotel, have a quick dinner comprised of energy jelly, and then edit it around until four o'clock in the morning, and then repeat the process all over again. Although there was just one problem I was very nearly dead. <laughs> In fact, at one point, I did fall asleep at the wheel,、uh, or the handlebar, and then. My stubbornness in not letting other people edit the videos for me was ultimately my downfall, I guess. Against all odds, the cycle was completed in 46 days, and every single day of that journey,、uh, I did vlog it, we did film it. And because they're shot in real time, you can actually watch my facial hair grow and become more and more horrific as the episodes went on. However, by the end of the cycle, all the videos had piled up, and because we had two hours of footage for every single episode, it took me six months to work my way through them. And whilst the last episodes of the series were amongst the most Watched. The sporadic release schedule cast a shadow over the whole project, and、uh, 
well, ruined it for a lot of people, unfortunately. And when the final episode in Kagoshima was released in August, I turned my back completely on Journey Across Japan forever and never looked at a bicycle again. In fact, the sight of bicycles makes me physically sick. <laughs> Looking back at it all now, I realised the problem was I just didn't know what I wanted Journey Across Japan to be. Cycle series, a weight loss series, or a straight up travel series. It's very much a jack of all trades, but a master of none. And it's a valuable lesson I'll be taking forward into next year's project, uh, Journey Across Japan 2, abroad on a skateboard. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be amazing. No, I'd rather put my fingers in a blender. This year I've felt a mixture of anger and disappointment constantly. Angry at myself, my handling of it all, and the fact I've wasted so much this year, and disappointed that I let thousands of viewers down, I let you guys down by the way I handled it all. So for that, I am sorry, um, genuinely. Be bold, always push yourself outside of your comfort zone, but know your limits, especially if you run the risk of letting people down because it is the worst feeling of all. Well, that and falling off your bicycle. One of the criticisms I got on Journey Across Japan was that it was too scripted, it was too choreographed and pre-planned. And that's great constructive criticism, although it has got one tiny flaw, and that is none of it was scripted. I didn't fall off a bicycle for fun or cycle through a flood for my own personal amusement. Because cycling 2,000 kilometres and filming every single day of it simply wasn't enough, we also threw challenges in as well to add fuel to the fire. Oh, for God's sake. Interact with locals. Ask three people to say Journey Across Japan on camera. And there were some fantastic challenges including pimping our bicycles out with retro video games and dodgy pillows. Speaking only Japanese for one whole day. <laughs> Attempting to get strangers to say the phrase journey across Japan, albeit with limited success. Journey across the... Journey across Japan. Journey across the Japan. One of the more difficult challenges was to meet a stranger for the day uh, and get a tour around the city of Matsuyama. And I remember when it came out the capsule machine and looked at it, I kind of thought, oh God, I'm screwed. It's really hard to do something spontaneous like that in Japan usually. Uh, so I hastily made some phone calls to some Japanese friends. And Ryotaro, it turned out, had an old school friend in Matsuyama who was willing to show us around for the day. I feel like I'm in a spy film. The only way we know how to meet is that she's eating oranges because it's the local dish of Matsuyama. What's the code word? Oranges. Does it? Ah, hi. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. Hi. <laughs> Enjoying some oranges. Yeah, do you want some? I'd love an orange. <laughs> and that went on to be one of my favourite days of the entire trip, thanks to that challenge and thanks to Kazu. Seeing this beautiful city whilst being shown around by an eccentric Japanese woman with an obsession with oranges. But I think the best example of creativity under desperate circumstances came from the stretch along Niigata, where there's a beautiful stretch along the coastline, but it's absolutely Fuck all there to do. And while cycling through this abandoned place that time had forgotten, Joey the Animation Man and I received a capsule challenge to make a Japanese commercial in less than 24 hours. At first, because we were in the middle of nowhere, we had nothing to really go on or nothing to do. We were just gonna go to a beach and just sit on a beach and make a quick commercial there. But as luck would have it, we found a train station with a bespoke, wonderful train museum, complete with an old unused train carriage. There's, we saw a train carriage that's in the museum on them um, online yeah. and I can see it there just inside Ooh. oh wow <laughs> that's sick that is cool and after dropping into a nearby Don Quixote store and kitting Joey out in a stylish doctor's outfit and turning him into Dr Jelly we we're pretty much good to go really two one action <laughs> oh that's boy, it, that's it. what a day. We populated the train carriage with members of our production team and off we go, that was it. Dr Jelly was born. Dr Jelly! It's a great example of teamwork and creativity born out of desperation. And actually, if I had to do one spin-off series out of Journey Across Japan, it would be making like a series of commercials or short films within 24 hours, within one day. I think it'd be quite fun. Who knows, hopefully we can resurrect the great Dr Jelly along the way as well. Uh, although we're still waiting for a callback from the company in question. Heard nothing. Nothing at all.
when I think back to Journey Across Japan, I don't break it down by the locations themselves, I break it down by the guests that joined me along the way. And I think there was about 10, not including the random strangers that popped up as well. Admittedly, the most bizarre encounter we had on the trip was a stranger on a beach, time traveling man, as I like to call him. On the fateful morning that Ryotaro joined the cycle, he was sitting on a beach and I filmed a little intro with the camera, filming him introduce himself and he had this horrible smug expression, a smug expression that could break a thousand mirrors. Good morning, everyone. And several weeks later, I found myself editing that footage. And as I played it back, I noticed in the background behind Ryotaro, there's a guy that dives into the sand, kind of perfectly into frame. And now I'm joining the tour. <laughs> to this day, I don't know who, what, why, or how, but it was so perfectly timed, it was so intricate, that I genuinely think it might be a viewer from the future who came back in time to photobomb one of the episodes. I think the funnest random encounter with a stranger though was when I was in Niigata with my good friend Roy and we went out for fried chicken for lunch and we came across the eating champion of Niigata, a small local girl who could eat a seemingly never-ending bucket of food. I honestly don't know how the science behind this works given her size, that bowl. Look at the size of the bowl compared to her. It was absolutely mesmerising watching her devour all that food and then jump up and down to somehow let the food go down a digestion system. Don't know if that worked or not. If you're a doctor, is that is that a thing? I don't know. It seemed to work though, because she ate it all. And at the end of it all, I was stood looking like a bit of a loser, an absolute mockery of my eating capacity, given that she was half my size. Winner or loser? <laughs> Winner. Loser. <laughs> One of the most disappointing aspects of Journey Across Japan was the fact that I cut out my good friend Emma, Toki Doki Traveller, from three days in Kyushu at the end of the cycle. And unsurprisingly, people have been asking me all year, what happened? Why did I remove her from the videos? And the truth is, she made fun of my facial hair one too many times. She had to go. If something doesn't spark joy, you know. You know the score. No, the reality was Emma was a great guest and we had a lot of fun. But a few days before Emma arrived, I came down with a nasty cold. 40 days of cycling had finally taken their toll and stupidly, instead of resting up, I carried on cycling, I carried on going for it. As I said earlier, if you push yourself to your limit, you have to be prepared to suffer the consequences. And after 40 days of relentlessly pushing myself, finally my body told me to fuck off and just stop. By that point, not even Dr. Jelly could have saved me for my predicament. Good morning everyone and welcome back to Journey Across Japan, never ending cycle of despair. We are in Koma, 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 we in Kumamoto today. I fucked that up, didn't I? Just look at that hat. It's a, it, it, oh God, that hat. That hot, there. Oh. And joining us is our final guest, our third and final guest, even though we've had four or five guests, don't. No. But today we begin our last leg of the journey to Kuma. I've been really struggling in the rest today. I feel weirdly drowsy. It's okay. I think this is the first time you've been to one of my... <coughs> Let's do that again. So excited. <laughs> now you might be thinking, wait a minute, that sounds hilariously entertaining. Actual bottled despair on camera. Release it, put it online. But it wasn't entertaining, it wasn't good. It was me struggling to speak for three or four days, looking like I wished I was dead. Sorry, my nose has really blocked up. And so through no fault of Emma's, um, the videos were never uploaded. And I stand by that decision. Emma was good. I could edit it in such a way that it's just Emma and me blurred out on the screen, like some sort of dodgy, <laughs> some sort of dodgy hentai video. And I apologize to Emma for not being able to feature on Journey Across Japan. And I apologize to you guys that were looking forward to seeing her and seeing the last few videos in Kyushu. That is easily one of my biggest regrets of the whole trip. I do hope Emma and I can work on some videos together next year, because we always have a lot of fun together and I owe her a debt, as well as all the guests that joined on Journey Across Japan and the crew that made it possible. Yeah, all right, it's a cliche, but people do make the journey, uh, especially if they time travel from the future to throw themselves in the sand. Obviously, one of the main reasons I did journey across Japan by bicycles to get fit, as opposed to go to a gym and run on a treadmill. I wanted to go and do a real kind of cross-country adventure. And honestly, the actual cycle was incredible. I'd recommend it to anyone in a heartbeat. In the first three months before I even started cycling, I got a fitness tracker and I started doing 10,000 steps every single day. And I also cut out a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of rice, noodles, 
bread. I went from being 86 kilograms in August to being 82 kilograms in October, just before I started the cycle. The first few days of journey across Japan were the toughest, especially going up hills. Absolute nightmare. I had to get off the bike and run up with it instead. The hardest and most rewarding day of the trip was the Shimanami Kaido cycle over the inland sea of Japan across the beautiful chain of islands, about 70 kilometers in length. Fortunately, I was with Sharla and she struggled more than I did, so I felt pretty good about myself. I felt pretty good about that. By the end of Journey Across Japan, I could actually see my cheekbones for the first time in, I think, about a decade. Uh, it was magical, it worked. That being said, my face did look absolutely atrocious. It didn't help that while I was on Journey Across Japan, I had the worst diet I'd ever had in my entire life. A diet comprised mainly of convenience store fried chicken, energy jelly and a mixture of Picari sweat and coffee. And there's no doubt the diet definitely negated some of the health benefits that came from doing exercise every single day. Nevertheless, on the last day of the cycle in Kagoshima, I weighed in at 77 kilograms. As much as I considered taking the obligatory before and after photos of me topless, holding the phone like that with the mirror, like everyone does. I did want to keep a little bit of my humility intact because most of it had gone out the window by that point, but I'd lost nine kilograms from the day that I decided to go on journey across Japan. So with that in mind, it was a success, right? Yeah, success, Chris lost weight. No, not entirely. The subsequent burnout from the project mentally led me to eat my way back to happiness. And worst of all, editing videos is just about one of the most unhealthiest professions you can have. Hunched over a laptop for up to 16 hours a day, eating a diet exclusively comprised of junk food and diabetes. And because I had to edit literally dozens of videos, as you can imagine, the compounding effect wasn't particularly good. And in fact, when I ended editing the last video for Journey Across Japan, I was back to being 86 kilograms. Um, not good, really. Fuck. But it's not a completely depressing ending. Since August, the last few months, I have been doing 10,000 steps every single day and I'm now back to 82 kilograms. And I am gonna keep that up and I'm gonna continue to do it until I find another physical challenge to sink my teeth into next year and do it all over again. Do I regret Journey Across Japan? Mm, no, I don't. I regret the execution. Now, I've had some time to put some distance between myself and the project. I look back at it all rather fondly. All I'm left with are the amazing memories of all the things we saw, we did, we experienced along the way. The sad reality is being bold or trying to do anything different is always risky and yeah, I could have just sat at home and made videos that were far simpler, cheaper and easier to produce, but I really did want to show you as much of Japan as I could in a way that I thought would be fun and ultimately it's up to you to decide whether it was worth it or not. Um, but hopefully at least just one of the episodes on Journey Across Japan showed you somewhere new, taught you something interesting or made you smile on a bad day. And I think it was worth it. Maybe. Journey across the... Hmm? Ja Journey across Japan. Journey across the Japan. Journey across Japan. A Journey across Japan. Yes! <laughs> yes! Naraka! <laughs> Chris, you're the real monster. He is funny. Kumamo was gorgeous, man. Kumamo got dynasty ass. Jerry, are you okay? No, I'm quite fucking far from okay. Did you follow your dream? Yeah, I did. To be on the Abroad Japan channel? Not really.